All right, so I was once again minding my own business today. I was singing that song called Yeshua. Where it's like, my beloved is the most beautiful among thousands. And you should definitely look up that song because it's amazing, okay? Especially they have like longer versions. They got different people singing it. It's an amazing song. So I was like singing that song on repeat and then I was like, I gotta read the Song of Solomon, the Song of Songs right now, seriously. And it's appropriate because it is the summer of love. And um, so it's kind of exciting um, that, you know, like the, the story of Jesus is a love story, you know, and Jesus is the King of Kings and Lord of Lords, and he is the husband that we're all waiting for and um which is really cool and um and like so right now like the church his bride he's perfecting us you know he's like removing all defilement and like impurities from us like as we wait for him to come back and um but it's really cool because um it is a summer of love and it's like this is the summer where god is restoring families marriages making marriages happen, like igniting romances or reigniting romances. And um, it's just super exciting. Like, um, like I know I'm praying for my family personally, but I'm also praying for like and rooting for like a bunch of my friends and family and, um, and even my clients. I'm like, yes, you know, and um, it's just so cool. Um, like what God is doing at this time period. And um, so, um, okay, um, so Song of Solomon. So I'll be reading from the um, WMB, which is, uh, what's it called again? What was it called again? The World Messianic Bible. Some of the words are hard for me to pronounce, so that's okay you know you can read it yourself it's a very good book it's one of my favorites it's definitely like a favorite book for lovers like if you're a lover then you'll like the book if you're like not that mushy it might make you uncomfortable but if you're just like a lover at heart then you will love the book and you'll just think it's ridiculously good and so um so sorry i gotta get a drink of water Okay, so Song of Solomon's chapter 1, verse 1. Whew. The Song of Songs, which Solomon's, which is Solomon's. So, um, so in this story, the beloved is the woman, and the, um, so it's kind of like a play, and then it's got like friends, and then, um, then the lover is King Solomon. So it's pretty cool. Um, so the beloved says, Let him kiss me with the kisses of his mouth. For your love is better than wine. Your oils have been a pleasing fragrance. Your name is oil poured out. Therefore the virgins love you. Take me away with you. Let's hurry. The king has brought me into his rooms. And then the friends say, We will be glad and rejoice in you we will praise your love more than wine the beloved says they are right to love you i am dark but lovely you daughters of jerusalem like kedar's tents like solomon's curtains don't stare at me because i'm dark because the sun has scorched me my mother's sons were angry with me they made me a keeper of the vineyards i haven't kept my own vineyard Tell me, you whom my soul loves, where do you graze your flock? Where do you rest them at noon? For why should I be as the one who is veiled beside the flocks of your companions? Yeah, seriously. Okay, the lover says, If you don't know, most beautiful among women, follow the tracks of the sheep graze your young goats beside the shepherd's tents 
I have compared you, my love, to a steed in Pharaoh's chariots. Your cheeks are beautiful with earrings, your neck with strings of jewels. The friends say, we will make you earrings of gold with studs of silver. The beloved says, while the king sat at his table, my perfume spread its fragrance. My beloved is to me a sachet of myrrh that lies between my breasts. My beloved is to me a cluster of henna blossoms from the vineyards of Engedi. The lover says, Behold, you are beautiful, my love. Behold, you are beautiful. Your eyes are like doves. Beloved says, the beloved says, Behold, you are beautiful, my beloved, yes, pleasant. And our couch is verdant. The lover says, the beams of our house are cedars, our rafters are firs. So chapter two. Um, so the beloved says, I'm a rose of Sharon, a lily of the valleys. I am a rose of Sharon, a lily of the valleys. The lover says, as a lily among thorns, so is my love among the daughters. The beloved says, as the apple tree among the trees of the wood, so is my beloved among the sons. I sat down under his shadow with great delight. His fruit was sweet to my taste. He brought me to the banquet table. His banner over me is love. Remember that song? He brought me to his banqueting table. His banner over me is love. He brought me to his banqueting table. His banner over me is love. He brought me to his banqueting table. His banner over me is love. His banner over me is love. I love that song. Okay, that's totally my Sunday school song. Um, so he brought me to the banquet table. His banner over me is love. Strengthen me with raisins. Refresh me with apples, for I'm faint with love. His left hand is under my head. His right hand embraces me. Okay, I just lost my All right. Strengthen me with raisins. Refresh me with apples, for I'm faint with love. His left hand is under my head. His right hand embraces me. I adjure you, daughters of Jerusalem, by the ro rose or by the hinds of the field. I think rose means deer, by the way. Okay. I just don't know if I'm saying it right. I adjure you, daughters of Jerusalem, by the rose or by the hinds of the field, that you not stir up nor awaken love until it so desires. The voice of my beloved, behold, he comes, leaping on the mountain, skipping on the hills. I always think of a gazelle because gazelles are faster than deer, just so you know. Fun fact. So I like to think of gazelles. Uh, anyway, my beloved is a roe or a young deer. Behold, he stands behind our wall. He looks in at the windows. He glances through the lattice. My beloved spoke and said to me, rise up, my love, my beautiful one, and come away with me. For behold, the winter is past, the rain is over and gone, and the flowers appear on the earth. The time of the singing has come. The voice of the turtle dove is heard in our land. The fig tree ripens her green figs. The vines are in blossom. They give out their fragrance. Arise, my love, my beautiful one, and come away. Come away with me. That reminds me of that Nora Jones song. Come away with me. I love that song. So good. She's, she's amazing. All right, so the lover says, my dove in the clefts of the rock, in the hiding places of the mountainside, let me see your face. Let me hear your voice, for your voice is sweet and your face is lovely. Catch for us the foxes, the little foxes that plunder the vineyards, for our vineyards are in blossom. The beloved says, my beloved is mine and I am his. He browses among the lilies until the day is cool and the shadows flee away. 
turn my beloved and be like the roe. Okay, can I just say deer? Be like the gazelle. Be like the roe, roe or a young deer on the mountains of Bether. All right, chapter three, Song of Solomon. By night on my bed, I sought him who my soul loves. I sought him, but I didn't find him. I will get up now and I will go about the city, in the streets, in the squares. I will seek him who my soul loves. I sought him, but I didn't find him. The watchmen who go out about the city found me. Have you seen him who my soul loves? I had scarcely passed from them when I found him whom my soul loves. I held him and would not let him go until I had brought him to my mother's house into the room of her who conceived me. I adjure you, daughters of Jerusalem, by the rose or by the hinds of the field, that you do not stir up or awaken love until it so desires. Who is this who comes up from the wilderness like pillars of smoke, perfumed with myrrh and frankincense, with all the spices of the merchant? Behold, it is Solomon's carriage. Sixty men are around it, and the mighty men of Israel. They all handle the sword and are expert in war. Every man has his sword on his thigh because of fear in the night. King Solomon made himself a carriage of the wood of Lebanon. He made its pillars of silver, its bottom of gold, its seat of purple, the middle of it being paved with love from the daughters of Jerusalem. Sorry, I just got kind of, I think I spaced out a little bit. King Solomon, ah, King Solomon made himself a carriage of the wood of Lebanon. He made its pillars of silver and its bottom of gold and its seat of purple, the middle of it being paved with love from the daughters of Jerusalem. Go out, you daughters of Zion, and see the King Solomon with the crown with which his mother has crowned him in the day of his weddings, in the day of the gladness of his heart. The lover says, Behold, you are beautiful, my love. Behold, you are beautiful. Your eyes are like doves behind your veil. Your hair is like a flock of goats that descend from Mount Galilee. Your teeth are like newly shorn flocks. Flock. Shorn flock. Your teeth are like newly shorn flock, which have come up from the washing where every one of them has twins none is bereaved among them your lips are like scarlet thread your mouth is lovely your temples are like a piece of pomegranate behind your veil your neck is like david's tower built for an arm armory on which a thousand shields hang and the shields of the mighty men all right you ready for this your two breasts are like fawns that are twins of a row, which feed among the lilies until the day is cool and the shadows flee away. I will go to the mountain of myrrh and to the hill of frankincense. You are, you are all beautiful, my love. There is no spot on you. Come with me from Lebanon, my bride, with me from Lebanon. Look at the top of Amana, from the top of Sinir and Hermon, from the lion's dens, from the mountains of the leopards. You have ravished my heart, my sister, my bride. You have ravished my heart with one of your eyes, with one chain of your neck. How beautiful is your love, my sister, my bride. How much better is your love than wine. The fragrances of your perfume than all kinds of spices. Your lips, my bride, drip like honeycomb. Honey and milk are under your tongue. The smell of your garments is like the smell of Lebanon. My sister, my bride, is a locked up garden. 
a locked up spring, a sealed fountain. Your shoots are an orchard of pomegranates with precious fruits, henna and spikenard plants. Spikenard and saffron, cal calamus and cinnamon with every kind of incense tree, myrrh and olives with all the best spices, a mountain, of course it's all the best spices, right? Not the, not the worst. A fountain of gardens, a well of living waters, flowing streams from Lebanon. The beloved says, awake, north wind, and come you south. Blow on my garden that its spices may flow out. Let my beloved come into his garden and taste his precious fruit. So Song of Solomon chapter 5, the lover says, I have come into my garden, my sister, my bride, I have gathered my myrrh with my spice. I have eaten with my honeycomb, I have eaten my honeycomb with my honey, I have drunk my wine with my milk. Friends, eat, so the friends say, eat friends, drink yes, drink abundantly, beloved. And then the beloved says, I was asleep, but my heart was awake. It is the voice of my beloved who knocks open to me, my sister, my love, my dove, my undefiled. For my head is filled with dew and my hair with the dampness of night. I have taken off my robe. Indeed, must I put it on again? I have washed my feet. Indeed, must I soil them again? My beloved thrust his hand in through the latch opening. My heart pounded for him. I rose up to open for my beloved. My hands dripped with myrrh. My fingers with liquid myrrh. The handles on, okay. I was like, all right, this is getting a little heated here. All right, let's go back. Um, my beloved thrust his hand in through the latch opening. My heart pounded for him. I rose up to open for my beloved. My hands dripped with myrrh, my fingers with liquid myrrh on the handles of the lock. I opened to my beloved, but my, but my beloved left and had gone away. Ah, my heart went out when he spoke. I looked for him, but I didn't find him. I called him, but he didn't answer. Yes, I just rolled my eyes. All right, the watchmen who go out about the city found me. They beat me, they bruised me, and the keepers of the walls took my cloak from me. Okay. So I looked for him, but I didn't find him. I called him, but he didn't answer. Hey, that reminds me. Okay, there's um, Erica Badu. She sings this song. Um, it's a really funny song. About, um, I don't know, it reminds me of like um, blowing up blowing up her pager wait or i'd be blowing up his pager but he never calls me back or something like that it's like the funniest song when pagers were cool pagers definitely cool before cell phones definitely very cool and we had like codes like with the numbers like um you missed out. If you never had the love notes that were written on paper in middle school, like with and folded, like all these like origami, like intricate ways, you don't know what life is. And then after we had like all those cool folded letters that we would like pass out to our crushes, that was so fun, by the way. That was like the coolest. And then we always had like a stack of letters, like we would write in class because California schools were so boring and we would just like entertain ourselves in that way and just write letters in class and then just pass them out and uh, that was so fun and then and then we had the pagers and we would like give each other codes but it was so cool because if someone paid you you didn't actually have to call them back 
is like you just see oh okay I don't know you know but you, we could send each other like you could say like I love you like in code I don't remember I learned all the codes but I don't remember them now <laughs> but there was like a code for everything like a numerical code almost reminds me of um what is that like Morse code <laughs> like we had our own language with the pagers and I remember I got my first cell phone when I got my well I started driving my first car which is the 68 Nova and it was metallic blue and it was three on the tree so it was like first gear second gear third gear so it was literally three gear, gears on the tree like by the right here one two three and so like and then my gas gauge didn't work and so um so my and i was always like messing with the carburetor and um and so i'd be like on the side of the road like fixing my carburetor again and so my mom made me carry this gigantic pre i mean it's prehistoric now but it was like a Motorola phone it was like this big like it was like fat you know what I mean it's like here's a phone for emergencies like if you break down but or like you run out of gas or you're having carburetor trouble or whatever again and so like here's a phone yeah I bought that car for a thousand bucks I thought it was a good deal I liked my car it's like a boat you can fit like 20 bodies in the trunk like it was a good car but um but anyway, so uh, my mom didn't think it was a very good car. That's why she gave me, but it was like she gave me the cell phone to use and say, but don't use it because it's too expensive to use. So just like hold this brick, like just keep the brick with you, but don't use it because it's too expensive to use. So just use like a pay phone or whatever, you know, like just be, just be regular. Like here, here you go, but don't use it. So. So yeah, but I actually like those days because like, first of all, we had better conversations. We had way more fun outside. We're always going camping. We are always just like perusing. And I loved it. Like if you, you just like leave a message on somebody's answer machine. And then when you get home, you could check your messages, but you don't really have to call anyone back. Like you're not on call for anyone because like, I don't think we should be on call for people. Like, unless you're like an on call doctor and you actually get paid for being on call. I don't think we should be on call with our phones. Like it's just ridiculous. And so I bless you guys to use the do not disturb feature whenever you want. I love that feature. I literally have it on right now. It's like, I love that feature, but it's like, um, like our phone should serve us, not the other way around. Like my phone is my servant. I'm not my phone servant. You see what I'm saying? And so it's going to work for me. I'm not going to work for my phone. I'm not going to run to the phone when it rings. But I don't know why I got on that tangent. I'm supposed to be reading. I'm supposed to be reading the greatest book in the Bible. All right, where was I? Back back into time back to okay present day all right so i opened to my beloved my beloved left and i had gone away my heart went out when he spoke <sighs> oh man that's so good um i just had to say one more funny thing it was so funny when my car ran out of gas and i'd be like at the intersection and i was like because that was when gas was like 99 cents for some reason like gas was cheap at that moment in time which is good because i'd like scrape together all my money with my friends and like try to keep the money in the tank you know but i remember like when i would like misjudge it and we'd run out too early like my car would run out and be like at the intersection in ventura and be like all right girls get out and push and they'd be like what I'm like, no, seriously, you have to push my car across the intersection. Like, you want to go to the party or not? Like, push this car across here to the gas station, you know? And it's so funny when I tell, like, my passengers to start pushing or something. It's just, like, the funniest look on their face. Like, are you serious? <laughs> you really want me to push your car across? Man, that was such a good time.
because of course I had to drive it because it's my car so I didn't have to push it. <laughs> but yeah, that was so funny. It's the car that could. I, I opened to my beloved, but my beloved left and he had gone away. My heart went out when he spoke. I looked for him, but I didn't find him. I called him, but he didn't answer. The watchmen who go about the city found me. They beat me. They bruised me. The keepers of the walls took my cloak away from me. I adjure you, daughters of Jerusalem, if you find my beloved, that you tell him that I am faint with love. The friends say, how is your beloved better than another beloved? You fairest among women. How is your beloved better than another beloved that you do so adjure us? The beloved says, my beloved is white and ruddy, the best among 10,000s. My beloved is the most beautiful among thousands and thousands. My beloved is the most beautiful among thousands. Thousands. Okay, I'm telling you, you gotta listen to that song called Yeshua. I should probably turn on the light in my. I should probably turn on the light. It's dark in here. My beloved is the most beautiful. Among thousands. All right, where was I? Ooh. All right, my so the beloved says, my beloved is white and ruddy, the best among ten thousand. Yes, he is. All right, his head is like the purest gold. His hair is bushy, black as a raven. His eyes are like doves beside the water brooks. Washed with milk, mounted like jewels. His cheeks are like a bed of spices with towers of perfumes. His lips are like the lilies, dropping liquid myrrh. His hands are like the rings of gold set with beryl. His body is like the ivory work overlaid with sapphires. His legs are like the pillars of marble set on sockets of fine gold. His appearance is like Lebanon, excellent as a cedars. His mouth is sweetness. Yes, he's altogether lovely. This is my beloved, and this is my friend, daughters of Jerusalem. The friends say, where has your beloved gone, you fairest among women? Where has your beloved turned that we may seek him with you? The beloved says, my beloved has gone down to his garden, to the beds of spice, to pasture his flock, to pasture his flock in the gardens, to gather lilies. I am my beloved and my beloved is mine. He browses among the lilies. The lover says, you're so beautiful. All right, I'm going to be serious now. No, I'm not. I'm not going to be serious. All right. The lover says, you are beautiful, my love, is tar... Za, lovely as Jerusalem, awesome as an army with banners. Turn away your eyes from me, for they overcome me. Your hair is like a flock of goats that lie along the side of Galilee. Your teeth are like a flock of ewes, like little, little sheep. Your teeth are like a flock of ooze, which have come up from the washing, of which everyone has twins. Not one is bereaved among them. Not one is sad among them. Your temples are like a piece of pomegranate behind your veil. There are 60 queens, eight concubines, okay, and virgins without number. My dove, my perfect one, is unique. She is her mother's only daughter. She is the favorite of her who bore her. The daughters saw her and called her blessed. The queens and the concubines saw her and they praised her. Who is she who looks out 
as the morning, beautiful as the moon, clear as the sun, and awesome as an army with banners. I went down into the nut tree grove to see the green plants of the valley, to see whether the vine budded and the pomegranates were in flower. Without realizing it, my desire set with my royal people's chariots. The friends say, return, return, Shulamite, return, return, that we may gaze at you. The lover says, why do you desire to gaze at the Shulamite as at the dance of Mahanaim? All right, chapter seven. How beautiful are your feet and sandals, prince's daughter. Your rounded thighs are like jewels, the work of the hands of a skillful workman. Your body is like a round goblet. No mixed wine is wanting. Your waist is like a heap of wheat set about with lilies. Your two breasts are like two fawns that are twins of a row. Your neck is like an ivory tower. Your eyes are like the pools in Heshbon by the gate of Bath Ribbon. I don't know. Your nose is like the Tower of Lebanon, which looks towards Damascus. Your head on you is like caramel, 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 tomato, tomato. All right. Um, the, your head on you is like caramel. The hair on your head is like purple. The king is held captive in its tresses. How beautiful and how pleasant you are. Love for delights. This is, this, your stature, is like a palm tree. Your breast like its fruit. I said, I will climb up into the palm tree. I will hold of its fruit. Let your breast be like the clusters of the vine and the smell of your breath like apples. Your mouth is like the most, oh, sorry. Let me just read that again to make people really uncomfortable, sorry. Um, how beautiful and how pleasant you are, love for delights. This is your stature and this is like a palm tree, your breasts like its fruit. This is your stature and is like a palm tree, your breasts like its fruit. So I said, I will climb up into the palm tree. I will take hold of its fruit. Let your breasts be like clusters of the vine, the smell of your breath like apples. Your love is like the best wine that goes down smoothly for my beloved, gliding through the lips of those who are asleep. The beloved says, I am my beloved's, his desire is towards me. Come my beloved, let's go out into the field, let's lodge in the villages, let's go early up to the vineyards, let's see whether the vine has budded. Let's see whether the vine has budded. Its blossom, its blossom is open. Let's go up early to the vineyards. Let's see whether the vine has budded. Its blossom is open. And the pomegranates are in flower. There I will give you my love. The mandrakes produce fragrance. At our, at our doors are all kinds of precious fruits, new and old which I have stored up for you, my beloved. All right, so chapter eight, which is the last chapter, Song of Solomon. Oh, that you were like my brother who nursed from the breast of my mother. If I found you outside, I would kiss you. Yes, and no one would despise me. I would lead you, bringing you into the house of my mother who would instruct me. I would have you drink spiced wine of the juice of my pomegranate. His left hand would be under my head. His right hand would embrace me. I adjure you, daughters of Jerusalem, that you not stir up nor awaken love until it desires. Friends, the friends say, who is this who comes up from the wilderness leaning on her beloved? The beloved says, under the apple tree I awaken you. There your mother conceived you. There she was in labor and bore you. Set me as a seal on your heart. 
a seal on your arm. Your love is strong as death. Jealousy is as cruel as Shiloh. <laughs> Shiloh. I don't know if I say it right. All right. Jealousy is as cruel as hell. Okay. Let's just get to the point here. Its flashes are flashes of fire, a very flame of the Lord. Many waters can't quench love. Neither can floods drown it. If a man would give all the wealth of his house for love, he would be utterly scorned. The brothers say, we have a little sister. She has no breasts. What shall we do for our sister in the day when she is to be spoken for? If she is a wall, we will build on her a turret of silver. If she is a door, we will enclose her with boards of cedar. The beloved says, I am a wall and my breasts like towers. I'm a wall and my breasts like towers. Then I was in his eyes like one who found peace. Solomon had a vineyard at Baal Haman. He leased out the vineyard to keepers. Each was to bring a thousand shekels of silver for his fruit. My own vineyard is before me. The thousand are for you, Solomon. Two hundred for those who tend its fruit. The lover says, you who dwell in the gardens with friends in attendance, let me hear your voice. The beloved says, come away with me, beloved, like a gazelle or a young stag on the mountains of spices. Come away, my beloved, like the gazelle or a young stag on the mountains of spices. And so like, so I don't know if you know this, but a gazelle is much faster than a deer. So I just wanted you to know that. It's very important. So, um, so yeah. So I like gazelles, like, when I'm thinking about it. Maybe because I see deer all the time. Like, I go outside, I see deer, like, when I'm walking. So, like, that's, maybe it's, like, not as novelty to me because I see deer, like, at least once a week, if not more. I saw, oh, I saw a turkey yesterday. They're walking around. And then, like, when I saw the turkey yesterday, I was like, oh, man. And then I looked at my grapes, and I was like, okay, they're still, like, because the tur it's a, with the turkeys every year, it's a race to the grapes. So, like, my grapes are on the vine, and I have, like, a bunch of different kinds. But um, if I don't pick them fast enough, the turkeys jump up, like, on the, what do you call it? The trellis? Is it the trellis? They jump up, like, turkeys can fly, okay? They're birds. And they will, like, eat all my grapes, like, before I can pick them. So once I see that my grapes are getting ripe, I need to, like, keep picking them, like, at least maybe, like, every other day or something. Because otherwise, those turkeys like to eat all my grapes. And, um, and so, yeah, it's, it's a problem. And, um... So anyways, I like to think of gazelles because they're so much faster. I like to think of running fast like a gazelle and um, like being chased. So yeah, I'm sorry. No, I'm not sorry. But anyways, um, so that's my story. It's a really great book. I highly recommend it. I actually recommend you read it in a different version. Like the passion translation is so good, but like I would like actually like read this and like switch the versions a lot because man it's such a good book and like I like to switch versions because it's so fun to like read it like this is the first time I read it or the second time I read it in this version the world messianic bible so but I, I mean I like it but I think I would probably like the passion translation better but like it's it's such a good book that it's honestly good in all the translations. Okay, okay. It's funny because it's like you tell people to read their Bible, you know, and you didn't know that there's literally love stories in here. There's so many love stories, but this is what, this one is like, I don't know. This is like, this is like, um, I know it's hard to explain like there's a lot of love stories in the Bible but I feel like this one like hits 
like resonates more like this one is like literally the whole book is only a love story so like where like the other love stories in the bible it's like a piece of the story but no the whole book of song of solomon or song of songs is literally love story. like that's and it's like a play and um so i think it's really cool i think if people knew like how exciting the bible really was like they would stop consuming like all the garbage that like humanity consumes like you know like all the influencers and social media and like movies and because i really do think that um the truth is stranger than fiction like and it's way more exciting like it's so much fun more fun to live in the truth and like live in the light and um it's never dull it never gets boring like um so I think we should move away from being consumers, like just consuming, and like move towards being creators again and um, like creating your own fun, which I learned to do in the country, out here. If you don't know how to make your own fun, then you would not survive where I live. So, uh, so yeah, so it's all about making your own fun, throwing your own party and and everything like that. So I hope you have a blessed evening and a wonderful summer of love. And I hope that God rekindles the romance in your life. And, um, and that is off the hook. And I just wanna say one more thing, that God cares about our love stories. Like God is fun, you know, he's a lot, more fun than we are and uh i think i've said that before i think i've said that a lot of times but it's like um so we need to raise our fun factor okay if god is way more fun than us then what is wrong with us like what is what is off that is making us so like uptight and serious and um so i think we should have more fun and not be afraid to like experience pleasure with god and um it's actually really important because we were created to bring Yahweh pleasure, like to bring him, like that's why we exist. But he also wants us to experience pleasure as well. And so, um, so like God is simple. I think of God as like simple and like easy to understand. Well, not easy to understand because there's, there's a depth, a depth to God. Like you can always, like while it's simple, while he's simple and easy to understand because he's not complicated, there's always like a deeper level you can go with him. Like it never gets old. There's always like some more deeper revelation that you can get like the next day. Like you can get like revelation of God like every day, like just going deeper, deeper, deeper. And um, so he's simple, but he's deep, you know, like the depths, like who could know the depths of God? like. We don't know, like, if I wake up tomorrow, I'm going to know him more than I did today, you know? And um, so that's, like, what love is all about. Like, God wants us to have, like, a deep, connected relationship with him. And also, like, our, like, lover, you know, like, our husband, our wife, you know? And um, so... And then also like the people that God puts in our lives, like our divine connections, divine kingdom connections, like our friends and our family and um, like clients or whatever, like business partners, like um, or neighbors, like the connections we have, like he also wants us to like, um, I don't know, like experience pleasure from our from our friendships and connections like on earth too you know and so um so yeah i really think we should stop being so uptight and um and i feel like that is the heart of the father too because um where the spirit of the lord is where the holy spirit is there's freedom and um we have so much more freedom than we live in and then we know about it's like um that reminds me of that Bob Marley song, Free Yourself from Mental Slavery. Because it's like, that's really what it is, is mental slavery. 
and it's like that um that mindset that keeps us bound and so like but god is more than able to expand our minds and give us like heavenly vision where we can expand and not be so small-minded and narrow-minded and so i just wanted to like god is literally the definition of having an open mind like i've heard that term like used in so many ways that doesn't make sense and so like being open-minded doesn't mean that you don't have a backbone, okay? Because by the way, backbones are sexy, just so you know, but, and God has a backbone, you know, God is not mocked and um, he wants a, each and every one of us to also have a backbone. And so, so open-minded, I feel like it's used wrong. Like open-minded means like to change your mind to like, open your mind to the heavens like agreeing with heaven rather than just like what we see with our natural eyes and um or what we've experienced like oh i experienced a b c d so that means it's gonna happen again it's like no that was the past this is like you we know more like we're more equipped than we were in the past and so yeah so like breaking i feel like it means like breaking off cultural conditioning and like um like just coming into alignment like a chiropractor uh like coming in alignment with heaven and um like agreeing with heaven rather than what we see with our eyes and um it's pretty powerful and then like using our mouths to to decree and declare a thing you know and um and like not causing harm with our mouths because we're we're creators and we can literally like create or destroy things with our mouth and so um so yeah so if we're like creating something beautiful and like building people up or even like even like building ourselves up but not like in like a vain conceited way not in that way but like where we're like reprogramming ourselves to agree with who heaven says we are like you know like like what does heaven say about me you know like i was hanging out with my friend the other day and she said something about fat i was like don't you dare i was like it's called voluptuous it's not fat you know what i'm saying like that's curvilicious you know and so like coming into agreement with what god says about us like he says we're beautiful you know and um and he likes our curves you know and so um you know so coming out of agreement with a lie and like coming in agreement with like what heaven says about us is really important even if you have to say it out loud you know it's like, I am curvilicious, you know? I am not fat, okay? And um, so it's just, I mean, the little things matter. Like, not believing lies is like a big deal. Like, little lies and big lies and just like verbally correcting them out loud is pretty powerful. So I hope you are encouraged today. I hope you enjoy your summer of love and I encourage you to drink from your own cistern which means uh I think that's okay that's my problem so that means like you know the grass is not greener on the other side like enjoy your own husband enjoy your own wife and like there's I don't know when I think of uncovetedness when I think of like uncovetedness like outside of covenant I think of Jezebel you know that nasty nasty lady in the bible so so when i think of covenant i think of like safety and like security and like purity and um yeah like if a um like if you start a fire but it's not in the fire pit like it's not like if you start a fire okay i live in california right so if I just start a fire in my backyard in the summer, like what is like July 20th, right? If I start a fire in my backyard in the summer and I don't use my fire pit, that fire is going to get out of control and I'm supposedly in a fire zone too. And so it's like, 
that would be a very bad idea okay i if i did something that stupid i would literally like burn down my whole house let like and i don't know how many of my neighbors okay so it'd be like a very bad idea and so like in the same way when you're dealing with like hot flames you know like talking about you know like sexual relationships when it's literally like lighting a fire in my backyard without the fire pit you know and so covenant like being married like within marriage is like you're you make sure you have like a fireplace or a fire pit and um and you're doing it like the right way you're starting the fire the right way with the right equipment and like even like when you're done with the fire you're gonna pour water on it and make sure the fire's out just because you're like responsible camper or whatever so i don't know food for thought food for thought wow i haven't made this long of a video in a long time or did i ever i don't remember but it's been nice talking to you i hope you have a blessed evening i hope you enjoy my ramblings and one of my it's hard to have a favorite book of the bible it's hard to have a favorite book but this is definitely one of my favorites because i'm such a lover and um like that's my nature and so i don't know if it is my favorite book i don't think i ever picked a favorite bible book but if i had to pick a favorite i'm pretty sure being a lover, I would choose that to be my favorite. I'm pretty sure. I'm trying to think. Hold on, let me think. Oh, no, I like the Psalms, too. I like all of it. Okay. Maybe song. Maybe Songs of Solomon. Songs of Song is my favorite. It could be my favorite. How about it's my favorite for today? I might change my mind tomorrow, but it's my favorite for today. So... Whew, I better go finish my miso soup. And um, I hope you have a blessed evening.